Hey guys, all right, so this is our second reading lesson on poetry. Um, we're gonna focus a little bit more on the words the poet uses um, and how they create images and feelings um, to us, the reader, instead of focusing on rhythm and rhyme, okay? Not all poems have to rhyme, so I'm gonna give you a couple examples of that. All right, so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna explain how words create images or feelings in a poem how by identifying words that make us see, hear, and feel, and why in order to explain the theme or the main message of the text. So the poet is going to be giving us some sort of message through a theme, okay, of some sort, and they're gonna do this by using very specific words, and those words usually make us see something, hear something, and feel something. So let's go ahead and start practicing identifying those. So we're gonna look at this first poem, Snow Shape. Okay, uh, what do you think this poem is about? Looking at the image and using the words, snow, shape. Yep, this girl is in the snow and she's making a snow angel. Yep, and you can always look at the essential questions over here too, because they're gonna give you clues. What excites us about nature? Read how poets describe things in nature. So this sort of helps to guide us towards our theme, okay? So what is the author really focusing on? Okay, when we're talking about theme, we're talking about the main message, what the author wants you to learn or know, a broad or big idea about life, and we're gonna to have to sort of figure it out or infer ourselves. We're gonna to have to guess using the clues in the poems, okay? So our theme is probably gonna to have to do something with nature. So let's go ahead and read a few of these poems to figure it out. All right, so we're gonna start with this one. I'm gonna read it first. Um, and as I'm reading, I want you to think about what you see, what you hear, and what you feel, okay? All right, so snow is falling from the sky. It drops on the ground. It's bright, bright white, just like cold milk. It looks so soft and smooth. I hate to ruin it with my feet, but I have got a plan. I stand up tall and close my eyes, and then straight back I fall. I slide my arms up and down. I move my legs in and out. I stand up to see what I have made, a four foot shape in the snow of me by Dana Williams. So let's go back and read it again. And we're going to stop as we hear certain words that make us see, hear, and feel things. So the very first thing that I start to see is snow is falling. I see that right away. Um, so I put those words, these are the words from the text. So I put them in quotation marks, okay? These little two marks up top to show that that is what the author wrote. That's what the poet said. So snow is falling, I can see that. If you see it on the ground, you can say that too. I also see that it is bright white. That's a color, right? It looks soft and smooth. It's kind of enticing, right? It's exciting to go out there. You wanna jump or walk in the snow. Um, and then as you move forward, She's talking about standing tall, closing her eyes, falling back, and then she starts to do something. I can see her slide her arms up and down and move her legs. So I'm gonna put slide arms and move legs because I can see her doing that. And then all of that ends up having her make something. What does she make at the very end? How tall is it? It's about her size, right? She's probably about four feet maybe. She makes a four foot shape of me. So the author is making that angel of herself. So I can see all of those things. All right, can we hear anything? And this is you sort of have to think outside the box a little bit. Can you hear anything? You can hear snow falling. I can hear snow, snow falling. If you really listen closely when you stand outside, it's hitting. The, the leaves and the trees and falling on the ground, it's super soft and quiet. You can also hear the snow crunch, right? As you move 
You're, she's um, with my feet. She hates to ruin it, but she stands up and she falls. When you fall back in the snow, you probably hear it crunch. When they slide their arms and move their feet, you probably hear it crunch, okay? So that's sort of what I hear. Um, and then what does it make you feel? She's excited, right? She has an exclamation mark here, right? And she looks at it right here. She hates to ruin it. So she almost feels a little bad. Hate to ruin it. But she still wants to do it, right? So she has a, what does it say that she has? I have got a plan. So I would say that she's excited about it. She is looking at the snow. She has a plan. She knows what she wants to do. And she's chosen to do it, okay? So with that plan in mind, she's sort of excited, okay? So this sort of talks about how snow is exciting. Snow is part of nature. Nature lets you do exciting things or try new things. Um, so this poem sort of speaks to that. All right, so let's try another one, okay? All right, this one, new season, we're gonna be in spring. We're gonna talk about these things called helicopters and not the helicopters um, that fly like the aircraft, but a different type of helicopter. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna show you a picture of what these helicopters look like in just a second. Okay, so by Sylvia Cassidy. One day each spring, and I never know which day it will be, the tree outside my window fills with a wind all its own, swells like a giant silk parasol, lets fall a wondrous storm of helicopters, pale, pale green. All right, what is something that you see? I'll read it one more time. One day each spring, and I never know which day it will be, the tree outside my window fills with a wind all its own, swells like a giant silk parasol, lets fall a wondrous storm of helicopters, pale, pale green. So first off, I can see what color they are. What color are these helicopters? Pale green, okay? And so that's kind of like this color down here, that pale green color. All right, so that's what color they are falling. Um, it is springtime, right? Maybe you can see things in the spring. We also see what, what is she looking outside her window? What does she see? Use the words in the text. She sees the tree, tree outside my window. So you can kind of in your head see someone looking out of a window, right? You can see the person staring outside the window and she sees a big tree. And it's definitely wind, right? So the wind swells like a giant. Interesting, can you imagine what the tree would look like if the wind came by and it swells up? Swells like a giant. That gives me an image in my head. A giant is small? No, a giant is big, it's huge. So the tree must get really big when the wind blows. All right, so I can see all of those things. If you see something else, that's perfectly fine. You can put it on your box too. All right, so what do we hear though? What are some things that we might hear? You know, it's windy outside, right? So it fills with a wind. We can hear the wind blowing. We also have this wondrous storm, right? Do storms have a sound to them? Maybe. I think that's pretty good. If you hear something else, that works too. I know just wind in general makes a sound. And if something is falling, that might make a sound if they're falling on the ground. Maybe you hear them falling. All right, and then how does this make you feel? There's a word in there that describes sort of this moment of these things twirling around and falling. What, what kind of a moment is this? Is this a scary moment? 
Is this a boring moment? It's a, what's the word they use? It swells like a giant silk parasol. Let's fall a wondrous storm of helicopters, pale, pale green. So it's wondrous, almost like wonderful. It's a wondrous, um, maybe curious, You're, it's interesting, not really sure what's happening. So this wondrous storm, it's very exciting. And I never know, one day, each spring and I never know which day it will be if you never know when it's gonna happen what kind of a feeling does that create I never I don't know what day but it's coming it's kind of exciting right it's so it's a surprise I never know which day okay so that kind of creates this moment of excitement all right so I'm gonna show you what these helicopters look like has anyone seen these before so these are um, the seeds of a tree, um, and the, not all trees, but a lot of trees have these, and they will break off eventually, and then they twirl. They twirl down, um, and they almost look like helicopters as they twirl and fall to the ground. Um, so if you ever see those, that's what people call those. So that's what this poem is about. All right, so that is, again, focusing on nature right and how exciting or wondrous na nature can be right it's exciting to us okay so that's going along with that theme all of these poems are about nature and how it's exciting all right we're going to do one more if you want to pause and try this one on your own go ahead and pause it and try it on your own and then you can come back and listen to um my explanation of the poem okay and this one has a little bit of rhyming in it all right, so this one is The Windy Tree by Eileen Fisher. Think of the muscles a tall tree grows in its leg, in its foot, in its widespread toes, not to tip over and fall on its nose when a wild wind hustles and tussles and blows. All right, read it one more time and we'll think of those rhyming words real quick. So think of the muscles a tall tree grows in its leg, in its foot, in its widespread toes. All right, so toes and grows. Let's see if there's any others. Not to tip over and fall on its nose when a wild wind hustles and tussles and blows. All right, so let's go ahead. This is a short one, but what is something that you see? I can see the muscles of the tree, right? And it's a short tree or a tall tree? Tall tree. So it must be big and grand. Uh, what would a tree's leg and foot and toes? I think that's interesting. Leg, foot, toe. What could that be? Maybe the trunk. Yep. Maybe the branches. Maybe the roots. Going into the ground, holding it down. Yep. All right, um, what else do we see? Oh, we can see the wind. The wind hustles and tussles and blows. So the wind hustles, maybe blowing. Okay, can you hear the wind blowing? Yep, hustles, tussles, oh, tussles and blows, okay going and, and blowing against the wind and making it sway side to side, but it's not falling down. It's not to tip over. Um, and what do you feel? If you think of muscles, I think of something strong, right? Strong, maybe it's sturdy. It's not going to tip over. This idea actually of being sturdy might, when it says not to tip over right? It's sturdy. It's not going to fall, not to tip over. So there you go. Uh, nature being exciting, but also strong and sturdy. Absolutely. It can endure wind and hold on tightly. Um, all right. So here, there's just a couple poems. Um, I know it can get a little tricky to focus on those words, but as you're reading, it's really good to think about all the details and the images and the feelings that a poem can, can give us, okay?
All right, I'll see you next time. Bye guys.